right guys, how you doing? It's Rabia. I hope you're all doing extremely well today. In this video, we've got a very exciting product that I had the pleasure of looking at back at NAMM 2020. As some of you know, I'm a huge fan of Two Notes Audio Engineering. They are, in my opinion, one of the best manufacturers of load box and IR simulation that you can get. They've got some amazing products uh, that I've reviewed over the years, and I personally use quite a lot of them. I use a Two Notes uh, Torpedo Studio at home for a lot of my recording and IRs and demos and stuff. And I've got a couple of those Cab M pedals. Well, they look like pedals, they're not really pedals, but they're about pedal size. And I use those for my IEMs live for Tosca and for live recordings. As you may have seen, there's a couple of live videos from download and stuff that was using uh, those Cab M boxes, which are incredible. A while back, I did a video on the Two Notes Captor, which was a uh, little load box which had an IR built in and you could attenuate as well. And it was a really useful portable load box option if you do a lot of live gigs and you need to be able to center front of house or use IEMs or attenuate uh, your cab. However, in 2020, uh, Two Notes have now brought out the Captor X which in my opinion is gonna be one of their best products that they've ever done because I think it just houses all of the amazing features, usability, UI, and just portability into such an awesome little beast. So we're gonna take a quick look at it right now. So you should be able to see the sweeps now. It's very similar to the previous captor, except now it's white, um, but it looks pretty much the same. It just has a lot of new features that you wouldn't have seen before. So taking a look at the front panel, what I'm calling the front panel, as you can see on the close-up, uh, you've got a control over a few different features, one of which I'm really excited about, and that is the preset knob here. So you can have uh, just like on the rev amplifiers, the D20 and G20, that Two Notes collaborated on them with using their load box technology, they have a preset knob. So you can scroll between uh, positions one and six different presets that can be cab configurations, miking configurations, your own IRs. Uh, it has its own DSP chip for some effects like reverbs and stereo widening and gates and all sorts of stuff. So you can program all that to one of the six preset knobs on the front which is awesome. Next along, you can see you've got an in-level switch, so that changes the intensity of the uh, input signal, uh, depending on what you're running into with your uh, interface or anything like that. You've got phones out here, then you've got your out level, then you've got voice, which is quite a useful feature actually, which I hadn't seen before, which is where, let's say you've loaded up a particular IR and you like the way it sounds for like, your crunch tones, uh, but you just need it to have a little less mid, let's say, for your high gain tone. You can literally use the voice control uh, all the way anti-clockwise would be lots of mid range. Uh, and then as you turn it up, it sort of scoops it out. It's like a contour control for the speaker IR that you're using. And then we've got space. Now this uh, sort of ties into the stereo double tracker as well, because the, the captor is stereo, has two XLR outs on the back. You can run that as dual mono or stereo. But the space control basically acts like a widening tool. Like I use a, a, a stereo imager a lot when I mix. It's basically the same thing. You can load up your reverb as a room or you can use a stereo double tracker. And as you turn the space up, it just widens the image. Um, so when you're playing on your own, that's a really nice feature um, because it makes you feel like you're sat in a room with an amp. Or if you're recording and you want ambient tones, lots of space in it, um, literally turn up the space control, but it will give you a roomier, vibier sort of sound, which I would find useful in a lot of the Tosca stuff because we like to use a lot of room mic in the ca uh, guitar sound. So that's the front panel, as you can see. It's also got a little grill with LEDs that light up, which looks sick. One of the really nice features that I've noticed when I'm using this is that there's like an adaptive fan inside that keeps the system cool. But it's, when I say adaptive, I mean you'll dig in with your guitar and suddenly you hear the fan like turn up and turn down and stuff, which at first I was like, is this supposed to do that? But then as more I played, I was like, yeah. So that's really cool because I think the more low end in power and volume you get, it gets hot fast. So it t t winds the fan up, but as you chill it out, it brings it back down as well. So that that's kind of cool. On the back panel, you've got your power in, which is a 12 volt, uh, 200 milliamp adapter. Then you've got your outputs, XLR left and right. Then you've got the grill where you can see the fan is. And beneath that, you've got speaker in, which is very strictly eight ohms, 100 watts at eight ohms. So make sure you don't connect that wrong. Then you've got speaker out with this three-way toggle switch, which gives you attenuation. So obviously you would run this between your head and your cab. Uh, and then the three-way toggle switch will control the level sent to the cab. So rather than having on a attenuator knob, uh, you've got three different volume settings, which I think is pretty cool. Then we've got the USB in, which is how you can control the remote into your computer. And then we've got the new MIDI 2.0 uh, TRS connection. So if you've not seen that before, it looks like a little headphone jack um, uh, that controls MIDI. 
And that answers the question there just now because this unit is entirely MIDI programmable. And what's nice is they throw in a MIDI cable as well. So you've got the MIDI DIN cable to the new TRS 2.0 MIDI cable. Um, but yeah, the whole thing's programmable. So you can MIDI program the amount of space in the tone, the IR you want to use, the mic position, um, the EQ, all the different effects built in. Loads of stuff you can do with it, and it's all MIDI functional. So that's very cool if you run an intense setup. There are a couple of different ways to route it as well. So obviously you can go from your amp into uh, the captor, into your cabinet, and then run the attenuator toggle switch. Or you can run your amp into it and then run it as stereo. So you can do the, obviously the two XLR out, which is what I'll be doing today. Or you can run it, um, so you run into the captor and then one XLR to front of house, the other one to monitors. Or of course you could do it where you run into the captor, you send a dry signal or a cab sim signal to one uh, in on your audio interface with the tone that you want to track in. But then you can send a dry signal, so like a dry amp signal and then uh, use your cab miking later if you use different software or you want to you know keep your options open for miking so there are, there are loads of different ways to, to hook this up so just before we get into the tones and everything I just have to say I think it's uh, already packed full of features and we haven't even listened to it yet not only to mention that it's got a gate in there reverb uh, we've got uh, EQ for bass or guitar or you can custom pinpoint your frequencies yourself it's basically wall of sound um, built into this with some really nice extra features you can control this entire product via Bluetooth to your iOS or Android device so that's just like the future is now in our hands isn't it really because before you could do it like you used to USB to the computer or now you can use your phone and your iPad and control this thing with Bluetooth. So I'm going to be doing a screen share of my phone um, so I can hook this up and control it all with Bluetooth and like I mean I can control it all so I can dial in reverbs, choose my IRs, mic placements, you'll see as we get into it but that's the general gist of the Captor X. Very excited to show you guys what it does. Rigs wise I'm going VX100 with my pedal board hooked up into the Captor X so I've got all my Strymon stuff in the loop and a couple of fuzzies we can mess around with tones uh, and I'm just going to use my Relic guitar with my Silo humbuckers in all going straight to the Universal Audio Apollo X8P interface let's check it out. I'm just going to show you really quickly how the app works uh, this is a preset that I've set up uh, using all the uh, included cabs that come with it obviously you can save 32 into the hardware itself and IRs but obviously Wall of Sound has like over 300 cabs you can find um, you know, like different cabs by different companies, Mesa, Zilla, all sorts of stuff. But I'm just using the cabs that are built into the captor and the mics and all that kind of stuff. And I've got a few IRs I've loaded in which we'll listen to as well. Anyway, this is my beer heavy dry uh, preset as you can see. Um, basically when you load it up you've got uh, the tabs along the bottom. So devices is where you obviously uh, connect. Um, mode being your virtual cabinets, meaning the cabinets are included or your IR loader. Then you've got presets where you can load and save your own. And then you've got all the different cabs and bass cabs that come uh, built in, as you can see. 112s, 212s, 410s, 412s, loads of stuff. Um, and yeah, basically, uh, let's get into it. So I've got my two mics set up, as you can see here, mic A and mic B. 50, uh, I've got a B at 57A and a 57, which is what I'm using for this tone right now. Uh, but if I swipe to the right, this is where you can see your EQ. So I've got a custom EQ set up where I can dial in different frequencies and boost and cut. Then I've got my uh, my enhancer, which is very cool. I was actually messing around with this on the clean, so I'm going to turn that off for now. But you can dr uh, dial in the amount of it you want for guitar or bass. Then it adds body thickness and brilliance, which is basically like resonance, presence, and a bit of a harmonic exciter. Then your reverb, as you can see. Then you've got your main output, and then there's tw twin tracker, which sort of links up with the width control as well. Then on the far right, you can see you can have it in stereo or dual mono. Uh, then your output, your voicing, as I said, and your switch uh, and your space even. So yeah, that's basically how it works. And of course, you've also got things like power amp emulation built in, which you can use if you're running a preamp rather than an amplifier. But in this, we're just running amp into the capture, which is going to be our cab today. So right now, this is like a heavy tone. Uh, I've currently got the EQ in, not the enhancer or the reverb. So let's just have a listen. <laughs> So 
So I think that sounds pretty fat. And that's just one of the, the straight in cabs. If I take the EQ off, this is how it sounds. So it's a little uh, muddier, but I've just brightened it up and uh, scooped a bit of the, the flub out. So I think this is probably a good uh, uh, opportunity to show you the twin tracker and how it works. So if I take entropy down, uh, I don't actually know what that refers to, but then again, that's my lack of vocabulary in this situation. Anyway, I'm assuming that's to do with tracking. Right, so twin tracker off. And now twin tracker on. So you won't hear anything yet if I turn up the entropy to 30%. So I was trying to mess around with that and play at the same time, which was proving a bit difficult. But as you could hear, it's a very obvious effect using the twin tracker and you can dial that in however much you want. And I think that's a really useful feature, particularly when you're playing on your own and you just want to get a bit of width or you're doing something with stereo effects. It's really, really handy. So now I've put in some reverb on my board with the big sky. So this is without the stereo tracker in, the twin tracker. <laughs> If I put it in, So I think that really works when you're trying to do ambient stuff on your own and you can get that kind of width, that kind of, it's just a bit more immersive. It feels like you sat inside the sound as opposed to it, well, not being. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a nice feeling. So let me show you what the voice and control does. This is now set back to halfway. It's worth saying on the app, if you double tap any parameter, it will set back to zero. That's very cool. Uh, anyway, this is how it sounds voicing at halfway. <laughs> Now if I turn it up, it should scoop more. Let's not try and play walk first thing in the morning. Um, but yeah, so if I go the other way, it gets fatter. I say fatter, I mean it just opens out, like you get way more of a mid bump, you know. I think it's, it's like moving a Q factor up or down, you know, boosting or cutting, but that's kind of what it feels like. So let's try a couple of the different cabs real fast, just so you can hear what's on offer. Let's go with 412. So right now we're on the Fastback 25. Kerosin, this one's cool. So what I'm going to do here is just dial in each microphone so that I can sort of mess around uh, and hear the difference between the two. So let's start with a nightfall. It's a lot darker, but I quite like being able to blend the fatness in. Right, that sounds cool. Now if I go to my 57. That's picking up all the top, so... Right, now if I blend the two together... And then I can back off the 57 a bit. So that's the blend on full. Sounds pretty nice, but if I then scroll across, get rid of some of that sort of wide mid-range with the voicing, so I boost it back up. 
uh, to just minus five. Sounding great. I just noticed the reverbs on, when you load a new cab, sometimes they come with reverb preset. So what I want to do now is try out some clean tones and get some reverb from inside the captor. So let's try that. Okay, so we've got a clean sound. Yeah, it sounds really good. Um, so firstly, let's throw on some reverb. I don't know about you, but I really, really like that. I think that sounds very cool. Let's try a room. Okay, so small room. So that was just with a little bit of some drive, uh, just to try and get a kind of slapbacky kind of roomy vibe. So. So the thing I'm really loving about it is just how much you can customize the sound. You know, if you want it to be like a, a nice realistic room, you could do that or an ambient thing or slap back or anything like that. Very easy to do. And again, with the phone app, just makes things, makes life way easier. So next, what I want to try is just load in some of my own IRs and just show you how that sounds alongside things. Okay, so now I've got uh, some IRs loaded up. This is the Zilla Fat Boy, just on its own. And then this is my other IR, check it out. Okay, so if we blend the two together. So of course it's loading my IRs fine, which is great. And the cool thing is that when you load them in, you can choose for it to be um, focusing on phase or latency or like the length of the IR and stuff like that. So you can really customize it. I always optimize phase because IRs are very different depending on if they were tracked in the same session, different mics. So it's nice that it compensates for you. Something to uh, two notes have always done is phase compensation, which I love. So let's mess around now. I'm going to add the EQ to it. I haven't actually changed the EQ since I messed with it for the other uh, IRs, but basically all I did was take some flub out, add a bit of presence, so it shouldn't be too drastic. But this is it without. Sounds great. And this is with. Very cool. Sounds very, very awesome.
Let's see how it handles some other more intense pedals for like low end and stuff. Like. thing to try is the presets so here's here's what we've got on preset number one obviously you can change that to whatever you want but let's just see what's in the capture Okay, preset number two. That was like a nice studio slapbacky kind of roomy sound. So this is two. Nice little bit of ambient reverb. I like that. Okay, preset three. all about that one. Okay, next, this is preset four. That's a nice roomy kind of sound. Let's throw on a little bit of drivage. That's a cool roomy kind of layered ambient sound. So you'd sort of double a guitar line with that or something and then blend it in quite low. So it just gives you a feeling like it's live in a room. That's how I feel about that one. Uh, number five. Loads of low end. It's a nice rich clean though, I like that. And I'm not really touching, this is just all the EQ settings, reverb room settings, cab settings that are coming loaded in. So finally, the sixth preset. I could feel myself getting carried away with that. I was going to get lost in it. Um, but yeah, that's all the presets. Okay, well, there you go. There is a good look at the Two Notes Captor X. I, I have to be honest, like, you know, I'm a big fan of the Two Notes stuff. I've been using it for years and it's just because it works. It, it's really easy to use. Your user interface is fantastic and everything about it just is easy. So I'm enjoying it and it feels and sounds great. Um, you know, things like the Cab M pedal that I use for my IEMs, it's like, everything that you love about the UI of a two notes product, but without the load box side, 
And the thing is, like, using the the torpedo lives or the studios and stuff, it's great, but you need to rack it up, you know, to keep it safe. And sometimes you don't want to take these big rack cases on tour, which sometimes we don't, which is why I use the Cab M's. But in this application, something like the Captor X, which is not much bigger than the Cab M's, and on top of that with the 100 watt load box and all these other features and the MIDI programmable side of it, it's like, you could literally rig this to program like amp changes, right? But then on top of that, change the speaker IR for something that's more suited to a clean or a crunch to an overdrive with the widener effect. Like it, it would go really in depth if you wanted it to. But at the same time, when you plug it in, you just want to use it at home into your interface. Literally what you heard is exactly what it sounds like. I, haven't, I, I don't do anything in post. That's just how it sounds with all the cool widening effects. And they've really upped their game with the reverb in this. Sounds very, very good, very immersive. Um, and the IR loader, everything about that's easy to use with the phase minimization features. And basically, I'm sold. I think it's a fantastic product and they, they've nailed it. It's just so good for the size. So I highly recommend any of you guys that are into home recording or gigging out and you need attenuation, but you want control over your IRs and you like to tinker, like absolutely get one of these. This is for me, I think is probably the best small form factor uh, load box like suite with all the customization that you could probably find right now and I think they've, they've totally nailed it, nailed it so congratulations two notes thank you for sending one over for me to review I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section like subscribe and share thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon